talking about the carbs, I don't mean like a bowl of spaghetti. I'm talking about fruit, vegetables, mm-hmm. legumes, like, you know, even like chickpeas, things like that can help balance out these okay. nutrients without adding unnecessary calories. Guess who's back? What? What? Guess who's back? I know y'all been missing. Yes, you have. So listen, guess what? The truth has transitioned to, we told you before, healthy her after 40. And today on our first episode, oh, by the way, I'm Dr. Tiffany and I'm Dr. Adrena. And today, y'all, we're talking about a serious business topic. Serious. This belly fat situation after menopause. I don't know how many folks I talk to about what to do, what to do about the food pa, about the belly bulge, about what else else people call it. Uh, I don't know. The the pouch. Some people say Pouch, yes, yes. Girl, had, yeah, Fupa pouch. It, it has all kind of the unwanted fat. That's what it should be called. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what it. Wants it. So we're talking about the why and what you can do about it today. So if you want to know what to do about yours, mm-hmm. stay tuned. Yes. So when we talk about this unwanted fat that we don't want, You first have to, we all know, the first thing we have to talk about is estrogen. So we know that you have a decrease in estrogen. We all do as we go through menopause. But the reason why estrogen is important in this case is because estrogen kind of determines where your fat stores. So when you had estrogen, you had fat kind of storing everywhere. But when you don't have estrogen, guess where it settles, y'all? In that unwanted place. So- it, it really is. I mean, it it really is. I mean, so that's one of the places that it stores. So therefore, that's why you get the bulge right there in perimenopause and in menopause. That's number one. The next thing we got to talk about is the metabolism. We all heard it, but it's metabolism. So when we talk about metabolism, metabolism by definition is the process of transforming food into energy to Mm -hmm. do daily activities like thinking, walking, breathing, and things of that nature. That's what your metabolism is. So we Mm -hmm. know that in menopause, you get a lower metabolism. But we ask, why is that? Right? Why at 20, we can eat a cheeseburger and be fine. And at 40, we eat a cheeseburger and we gain two pounds. Well, the reason is, is that the decrease in metabolism. One reason is also your decrease in muscle mass. So the unfortunate part, ladies, is as we get older, your muscle mass decreases by one to two percent at least every 10 years. And some can be more than that, depending on your conditions and health and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is significant is because your muscles every day burn energy. So the less muscle mass you have, the less energy that your muscles are using, therefore Mm -hmm. your metabolism is less. You're burning less energy every day. Yes. Yes. So that is one of the reasons. So we have to look at all of those things to combat why we have this wonderful unwanted fat known as the belly bulge. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we've discussed this, you know, on, on you know, various occasions, just the importance of what we take in. Yes. Because it's always that 80-20 situation. Mm-hmm. What we put in with the nutrition and what we eat is more than half the battle. It is. And decreasing inflammation maintaining a healthy balanced diet, not the cutthroat, cut it all out fed diets, but a consistent 
healthy, whole food diet. Yes. A restrictive diet, but I mean a nutrition regimen, how we eat is important. It is definitely how we eat is important because, for example, I know I love me some ice cream, but if I were to have ice cream, let's say a bowl of ice cream every day, every night before I went to bed, that's 500 calories, which is 3,500 calories a week. But after one year, that one bowl of ice cream will put on one or two pounds of fat. Now that's just my ice cream. So, hey ladies, if we're having soda every day and chips and ice cream and all of these things, that's why you're seeing a lot of the fat to be distributed because you're not, you're decreased metabolism. You're not burning it off. You, that's why the same exercises also may not work. Yes, that's because right. You're doing the exact same thing that you were doing, but you're not, your body is not using as much energy. Another reason for that too, is because with age, of course, we talked about less activity, the muscle mass, but also our or- organs are aging too. So they don't work as effectively. It's like kind of like that car. You know, when you get it new, it's all good. But as you get older, it's still working. And I love my, you know what I mean? Thriving. But Thriving is the goal. Yeah. yeah. But it may, it's working not to the potential or not to the same um, efficiency, you would say, as you as it was when you first got it. Mm-hmm. So those all contribute to that belly fat. Yeah. And the thing is, though, again, just optimizing these bodies, we have to maintain a healthy diet and we have to keep moving. And so as we even after the age of 30, our nutrition needs change. Mm -hmm. And definitely with the changes of menopause, we have to think differently about how we eat, how we move. And we have to really be intentional about it. And not just floating in the wind and just push through, continuing to do the same thing. As you said, you know, things have to change as these bodies change, but we can still be healthy. We can still be active and man, we can still be fine. We got a long long way to go. We can be fit and fly. Exactly. And that, though, requires us to be purposeful and intentional. And the thing is, you know, it, it, it starts with determining what your nutrition needs are, right? So even like an app, a free version like My Fitness Pal, you can plug in your current weight, your target weight, and it'll let you know the calories per day that you should target. And as you log your food, and I have never been good at counting calories, y'all, but the app is magnificent in that you just put in your food It'll calculate the calories and you can even determine your macros, which is really important too. And I'm telling you, I'm somebody who doesn't like doing any of this as far as calculating calories, calculating macronutrients. It's not my thing. I love a healthy whole diet, but down to the minutia that way has never been my, but the, but the app or your an app of your choice can help you do that so that you can be intentional and thoughtful about it and not just winging it. And so you target, you know, um, at least 30% of protein. So once you, once you calculate your total calories per day, 30% of that should be protein. And then 40% should be healthy fat. And then the other 30% should be carbs. Now I know everybody's like, Not a carb, but I'm telling you, carbohydrates are so important, especially during this season of life, because it is what our bodies, they are what our bodies use for energy. And they're also important for when our metabolism slows, as you said, you know, when our metabolism slows, we need energy sources to combat that. So like you said, I mean, the protein is good for maintaining muscle mass and building muscle, which is important for metabolism and strength as we get older. I mean, you want to avoid falls. 
you want to stay independent and active and healthy, muscle is important. Yep. And so, and then the um, healthy fats are what help stabilize all of these hormone shifts. And they also help us to absorb the nutrients that we're putting in. So those three core macros are really important to track and then make sure you're getting them in there every day. And so as we talk about sources of protein, you and I love those premier protein shakes. Yes. Because those just one little shake and they taste good too. Cause I ain't about just yeah, yeah, nasty protein. They yeah. But they each little shake offers 30 grams of protein. That's half the battle because you want to target at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now that says like, that sounds like, whoa, but if you really target what you're eating and how you're eating and you track it with an app on your phone, then you can do that. And so you, you target a gram of protein per pound of body weight. And that can be, you know, nuts and seeds and, and yeah. lean meat and fish. And then the healthy fats can come from nuts and seeds and avocado and olive oil and fatty fish like salmon. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. Exactly. And then if we're talking about the carbs. I don't mean like a bowl of spaghetti. I'm talking about fruit, vegetables, mm. legumes, like, you know, even like chickpeas, things like that can help balance out these Sometimes. nutrients without adding unnecessary calories. And so those those things are really important in how we eat and the way yeah. that we choose to eat as we yeah. get older. It definitely is. And even just simple things for we talk about weight, you know, weight bearing exercises. And everybody's like, oh Lord, mm-hmm. I don't get all bulked up like I'm, you know, uh a muscle or, you know, get all bulked up, but do little things. You know what I mean? Like when we say weight bearing, we don't mean just a typical doing triceps and biceps. I mean, when you're doing crunches, add a dumbbell to your belly and, and you know what I mean? That's what you could do. I know Tiffany, you say you just went on a walk and you wear a weighted vest. A weighted vest. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Some weights when you're walking, some ankle weights. You know, walk or walk would actually some some low like five pound dumbbells when you're walking dumbbells when you're walking. So those are just simple things that you can do to get weight bearing exercise in in your daily activities. You don't have to bulk up or, you know, look like you're about to go do a competition um, (laughs) like that. But those are things that you can do um, and just do more reps. That's right. And then as we talk about targeting this belly area, you know, even that doesn't have to be a hardcore targeted ab workout, but just even functional things. I mean, I was talking with my mother about this today and you too, Adrena, yesterday, mm-hmm. functional use of, of your abs. So if you are sweeping the floor or lifting your laundry basket or um, even on your walk, on your daily walk, if you contract your ab muscles, like pretend like you're about to get punched in the gut and you you tighten those muscles, mm-hmm. if you if you repeatedly contract and release those muscles just in daily activity, that's going to strengthen the the six pack muscles, the rectus abdominis. Yes. And then that can happen on a daily basis, even outside of a focused workout. And and it, that also will protect your back. So as you're lifting and you're using your legs and you tighten your core as you lift, that also protects your lower back. So you're preventing injury. But then if we're talking about focused exercises that are safe and effective, we can talk about crunches, crunches where you're just lifting your shoulder blades only up Mm -hmm. off of the floor and contracting those muscles. Avoid sit-ups. Oh, yeah. Increase the risk of lower back injury. I tried to change that even when we were in the army, but they, you know, they weren't paying <laughs> That's a whole nother. <laughs> okay. Yes. But the the full sit-up can increase the risk of lower back injury, but a crunch 
is excellent for, for abdominal strengthening. Leg raises, the Russian twist that you do in a yeah. V-sit, those, as well as planks, even a plank from the forearms or even on your knees, holding a plank, gradually increasing the amount of time that you can hold that plank. Those are all targeted exercises for your core. And I know everybody wants to be snatched, but I'm also talking about being strong and fit and and healthy long-term, y'all. We're talking about healthy her after 40. We're talking about also after 50 and 60 and 70 and 80. Yes. These are practices we put in place to maintain for the long term. Yes. Right? Those are e- excellent um, exercises. I know those are things that I do. I mean, or all the, you know, I mean, definitely do. And I've started doing, actually, I have to admit, I started doing my contractions today uh, of my activities because I didn't even think about, I mean, it's things that you don't think about. You do all the other things. It's like, oh man, I could be doing that every day. And yeah. little things like you know, looking at TV, contract. Your, your abdominal muscles during every commercial. Mm-hmm. A lot. So drink your water and do your abdomen exercise. <laughs> every yeah, you know I mean, just just get moving. Mm-hmm. Things like that would even help. That's right. That's right. All right. So yes. Yeah. So remember, you want to get rid of the bulge. There's some things you got to do, but there are key things that make the is the reason why you have the bulge. It is the decrease in your estrogen. Your decrease muscle mass, which all of that equates to a lower metabolism, yeah. is a reason for the bulge. That's right. Put these things into practice, y'all, so you can be a healthy her after 40. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time. Bye for now. See you later. Bye.